here is the completed section two of Starflake in the brioche version. And here are the decreases, and there was that row where we skipped the decreases right there. Beautiful two-color brioche. And for section three, rows one and two, follow the garter stitch or the two-color brioche rows one and two, depending on which version you did for section three. So I'm working on row three. Once you work rows one and two here with my light main color, you'll work all the way across the row for rows one and two, and row three will use the contrast color. Knit three, yarn over, and we're going to knit until we are three stitches before our marker. Turn to work the wrong side, row four, and knit to the last three stitches. I am on row five with main color. Knit three, yarn over, knit to three stitches before the last turn. This was the last turn, so count one, two, three, three stitches before that last turn. This is where we turn with our main color. On the wrong side, slip one purlwise and continue to purl to the last three stitches. Row seven, using the contrast color, we are knitting to three stitches before the last turn. There's the last turn, one, two, three, and turn around. So we're always turning earlier each time, three stitches sooner for each short row turn. And with contrast color, knit on row eight to the last three stitches. And continue to repeat rows five through eight, the last four rows, working the short row turns. Here is the completed right wedge of section four, and there should be 16 contrast color garter ridges. And once you're done with those 16 ridges, you can break the both colors, the main color and contrast color. And the last row you worked was with the main color, working a right side and a wrong side row with the main color. So break both strands of yarn, and then we're going to make this same kind of wedge on the left edge. And I've started that already here on the left side. And to start the left wedge with rows three and four, you're going to start on the wrong side. So at the beginning of the wrong side with the contrast color on row three, you're going to work across the wrong side until you reach three stitches before the marker. So working with that contrast color to the last three stitches before the marker, turn around, and then you'll purl on the right side to get that garter ridge. So here are the main color and contrast color stripes for that left short row wedge. And one of the only main differences for the left wedge is whenever you're working with the main color, as you're purling across on the wrong side, whenever you turn around, so now I'm turning three stitches before the last turn. On the right side with main color, slip one knitwise. Knit to the last three stitches. And continue working rows five through eight for the pattern repeat of the left wedge until you have 16 total contrast color garter ridges. For section five, we are going to make some short row wedges on top of these increase locations. So we're going to make four short row wedges starting right here at this location. So to begin, we need to look at the right side and slip the first 119 stitches onto the right needle. 
So slip all the stitches, all 119 stitches onto your right needle. And that should bring us all the way to here. I put a stitch marker after the 119 stitches. So I need to slip all the stitches to here and we'll stop 15 stitches before the marker next to our increase location. I just slipped 119 stitches onto the right needle. This is the first stitch marker. And now I am 15 stitches away from the second stitch marker. With the contrast color, knit 15. Once you knit 15 stitches, you should be at the marker, slip marker, knit one, slip marker, and knit 15 more stitches. Here's the 15th stitch after slipping the markers. Turn to work the wrong side. Wrong side, row two, knit 15, slip marker, knit one, slip marker. We're going to knit all of these contrast color stitches, 31 total stitches to the end, and then turn to work the right side. I just finished knitting all the contrast color stitches for row two, turn for row three. For row three, we're going to knit 29 stitches. As you knit row three and all other rows, just slip the stitch markers as you come to them. So we're going to knit 29 right here. It should be two stitches before the end. Stop, turn around to work the wrong side. Here's the 29th stitch. You should be two stitches from the end of the contrast color stitches. Turn to work the wrong side. Knit 27. On the wrong side, row four, knit 27. This should bring us all the way to here, to two stitches before the end of our contrast color stitches. Here is the 27th stitch for row four, two stitches away from the end of the contrast color stitches. Turn to work row five, right side. Knit to two stitches before the last turn. So we're going to knit all the contrast color stitches until we reach two stitches right here before that last turn. So right now on row five, we're going to knit to here and then turn. And then the next time on the wrong side, we're going to knit two stitches before this last turn. So next time we'll stop here, working two stitches earlier each time. After repeating rows five and six five more times, you should have eight total garter ridges along the center. So there should be three stitches in the middle, a stitch, a marker, a center stitch, a marker, and a third stitch. And after you finish repeating, go ahead and break the contrast color. So we have this lovely curved short row wedge. Now with right side facing for short row wedge two, slip 50 stitches onto the right needle. As we slip 50 stitches onto the right needle, this should take us all the way down to the next markers. Slip the markers and it should take us halfway through this section here. So we should stop 15 stitches shy from this first increase marker. So slip 50 stitches onto the right needle and that should take us here.
I just slipped 50 stitches onto my right needle. So now I'm 15 stitches away from this increase marker. For short row wedge two, we're going to do the same instructions. Starting with row one, we're going to knit 15, slip the marker, knit one, slip the marker, knit 15. So we're going to work with 31 total stitches on the center of this increase location to make another short row arch. Section six, row one on the right side with main color. We're going to knit three, yarn over, knit two, knit two together, yarn over twice. We'll be working yarn over two times in each short row gap with that SK2P double decrease. And I wanna show you the short row arches. So as you're working the yarn over twice, and knit two together. So we'll knit those two stitches together from our contrast color. Yarn over twice, knit two together. We'll do that seven times. Here is the seventh yarn over twice, knit two together. Now yarn over twice, and we need to do an SK2P while getting rid of these stitch markers. Slip the first stitch knitwise, slip that marker off, and we need to slip this other marker off so we can do the knit two together and pass the first stitch over for that double decrease and continue to yarn over twice, knit two together seven times. Here is the seventh knit two together, yarn over twice, and continue to knit 15 until you reach this decrease location. Here is the 15th stitch, knit 15. We have one stitch before our marker, SK2P. Slip one knitwise, take away the marker, we need to slip the stitch so we take away the other marker. Knit those two together and pass the first stitch over to decrease two stitches. So those are all the techniques for row one with the main color. So we have those big double yarn overs decorating that short row wedge. Section six features these increase double yarn overs, these double yarn overs with compensating double decreases to make those pretty little eyelets. So this is the wingspan edge on top of our short row wedge here with those main color stripes and the contrast color eyelet rows. And I've done one, two of the main color stripes so I'm working on row 16 on the wrong side. So on row 16 at the edge, continue to knit one into the first yarn over, purl one into the second yarn over. But on row 16, once you slip your stitch marker, we're going to reach the yarn overs in between the stitch markers. We're going to increase a bit more into those yarn overs. So here I'm reaching the yarn overs in between the stitch markers in the body of my shawl. 
and the pattern says knit one, purl one into first yarn over, and then knit one, purl one into second yarn over. So this is only going to happen in all of these yarn overs going on top of those short row arches. And it just happens in row 16 on the wrong side. So in this first one down here and here, you see there's just two stitches. One, two, coming from the double yarn over on the first yarn over, second yarn over, and the third yarn over on row 16. It's knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, resulting in four stitches coming from each hole. Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, and knit one stitch. Knit one, purl one into the first yarn over. Knit one, purl one into the second yarn over. And then we'll knit this plain stitch. Knit, purl, knit, purl. So continue working those, getting four stitches from those double yarn overs on top of the arches all the way across and then once you slip the last stitch marker and reach these double yarn overs at the edge these will just have two stitches knit one purl one knit one into the first yarn over purl one into the second yarn over after the stitch marker one more time here is section six after working row 16 on the wrong side, here is our edge, our left wing tip, the left short row wedge, and we have one, two big stripes, and our second little thin contrast color stripe, two stitches coming from that double yarn over, making these beautiful little lace motifs. We have our stitch marker, some smooth stockinette. And you see on top of this big short row arch, we have our double yarn over with two stitches coming from it. Here in that first contrast color stripe, the double yarn over also has the knit one, purl one, two stitches coming from it. And then row 16 was a little different in the body of the shawl. We have four stitches coming from that double yarn over. And this is going to help shape and make a nice flexible arch to echo those short row curves. Here is row 23 with contrast color. We have our beginning stitches with the double yarn overs and the double decreases all the way to the marker. And then we have a knit two together five times after the marker, yarn over twice, and a new abbreviation, S2K3P. It's going to look like this. We're going to decrease four stitches. So with the next one, two, three, four, five stitches, those will become one stitch to decrease four stitches. Yarn over twice. And here's the S2K3P. Slip two stitches knitwise, and then we're going to knit the next three stitches together. And if they're a little tight, you can put the needle through and give them a tug because we're going to knit those three stitches together and then pass the slip stitches over. Taking those five stitches into one. Yarn over twice, 
slip two stitches knitwise and knit these three stitches together. I like to tug on them first so that they're a little bit looser. Easier to knit those three together. And then pass the slipped stitches over. So those are all the techniques for row 23. So we'll be decreasing after the marker and we'll be decreasing in these stockinette stitches here and working our yarn over twice in that big decrease on top of those yarn overs.